What's up guys? We're a band called Ivy Paint and you're watching The Cookhouse. Da, 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 da. Hey, what's up? Uh, we're a band called Ivy Paint. We're a pop punk band based out of Orlando, Florida. My name is Sean Duong. I am the lead vocalist. And over to my left. My name is Christian Wheeler. I'm the lead guitarist. My name is Jason Flanders and I'm the drummer. My name's Cal Mueller, and I'm the rhythm guitar player. How do you think it came together uh, in 2018? Uh, but it was actually just me by myself. Um, I was going through a generic high school breakup, but at the time, it was it was devastating to my little high school soul. Um, and I needed to write some, some songs to get out my heartache. Um, and those songs became our first EP, Quiet Compassion. Um, and then eventually, I realized that it would be really nice to have full-time members also join the band. And so, one day, uh, my friend Nick <laughs> invited me oh, to dude. Chinese Buffet. I was like, dude, Chinese Buffet? I'm always down for Chinese Buffet. And then, uh, get there, and then this handsome fella also happens to be there. Yeah, so Nick was like a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I met Nick at the gym and after the gym one day he was like hey we're gonna go get food my, my buddy sean's gonna come so we went ate uh i you told hated him the food bro i'm just like not a big buffet person yeah, so but I, I enjoyed the conversation obviously it, yeah it was great um and then like we got to talk about music i told him that i like played played guitar and i just told him like oh if you ever need like a guitarist i think like matthew brown at the time was like your mm. guitarist um, and I was like, if you ever need like a guitarist, just let me know. Like a month went by, he said he needed a guitarist to like fill in for a show. I filled in and never left. <laughs> it so was, it was magic ever since. Here I am, <laughs> the the most senior member other than Sean. Yeah, it was cool paint. because uh, you already had like a. I sold you an Ivy Paint shirt. You oh yeah, that was a, we like drop. Nick and I were dropping him off at his house, and he was like, "Oh yeah, like do you want to buy one of my band's like shirts?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, sure, like, like I'll, oh, I'll help you out." I have to buy the shirt. I, I didn't ah. think I would like be uh, yeah. in the like actually in the band. Yeah, like, and you wore the shirt before you were in the band because it was yeah, like, like months I, before. Yeah, I actually wore the shirt. You know, I was yeah. representing. Yeah, and now here I am. And so then, uh, after me, it was this guy. Yeah, Jason Flanders and I have a funny meeting story. Um. I was trying to get him to join my old band because we lost our singer, but it's okay because he's in Magnolia Park now, so it's good for him. But um, I was trying to get Sean to come sing for our band, and Sean, I don't know what happened. I think I ghosted you at one point. Yeah, you kind of did, bro. Because um, <laughs> then I kind of quit that band, a bunch of stuff, and then I came up back to Sean and I was like, hey man, your music's tight. You still need a drummer. <laughs> And then, yeah, and we met, we didn't even like find each other on like social media or anything. We literally went on like findbandmembers.com yeah, or something literally cheesy like generic, that. Like, and it was like, the, like the, the interface on there was just like, looked like it was from like 2008 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, literally, dude. But, uh, I did it while I was at the slide at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then um, I got an email from, uh, I don't know, Jason Thomas Flanders or something like that. And then, uh, yeah, you... We're not really trying to join Ivy Paint. You were more so trying to get me to join that band. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, maybe I'll join it. But also, we just stopped talking to each other until you guys. <laughs> <eventually laughs> no. Because yeah. I was like, I went back and listened to your music again. I was like, this is tight. More people need <laughs> to hear this. So yeah. let me help with that. Um, and then, therefore, Jason joined as our drummer. Um, and at a certain point, I realized that I used to be the rhythm guitarist and the vocalist. And at a certain point I was like, I don't really want to hold guitar on stage for like 45 minutes. I was like, I don't know, after playing like three shows, I was like, the crowd vibes more if I'm like walking around, like with the mic. Yeah. And also I can like entirely focus on just the vocals without thinking about guitar. So then, rhythm guitarist, Cal. Yeah. Friend of Jason Flanders. For about five years or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with my old band, uh, he filled in drums with us for maybe yeah. about four months or so. Four or five months, yeah. yeah about four or five months. And um, yeah, we just kind of stayed in touch. And um, he, I think he called me out of the blue one day. Literally, I called, yeah. I hadn't talked to you in like, oh wow. I think the last time I saw you was at the Bat Ranch at one of the last <laughs> IU Paint shows that years. we played yeah. before 
lockdown. Yeah. yeah and I, I saw you there. And that's the last time I talked to you. Yep. Yeah. And then um, I called you randomly. Like, I was like, hey, do you want to wanna join I Me? Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I wasn't really doing anything musically. So, yeah. Here we are. Now Here we're we all are. a band of misfits making some killer music. <laughs> There, there's a little bit of crossover between all of us, but in a way, I think uh, there's no like one big band that like we all like united under. Mm -hmm. um, like each of us would individually like share some bands with at least one of the people, but not all of us would like like it. like um, you and I will listen to Polyphia. Yeah, but also these guys won't really listen to Polyphia. No, or like um, I've seen them live, dude. No way. Yeah. Okay. Well, you'll listen. Yeah, okay, I but Jason won't listen to Flip. I've listened to them mouth. plenty of times. <laughs> but they will seek it out. Like, what he's saying is that, like, whenever we like go to write music or practice or whatever, like, we're not all like listening to like one specific band or one specific mm -hmm. sound that we all like have a common like love for and trying to incorporate that. Like, we're not doing that. We all come yeah. from our own like different style of like music backgrounds, and I think like each person's like preferences with your music kind of comes through and like what yeah, they bring it, to the band. It creates like a unique like amalgamation of all of our tastes together. Yeah. Instead yeah. of a, I don't know, I feel like if it was just like one band that we united under then it would be like It'd us just, just copying copy that games. sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, in, in regards to like individual taste, um, I'll vary between like those Warped Tour like pop punk bands like uh, Neck Deep, Real Friends, uh, Story So Far. Um, but then I'll also switch over and like into like the more indie rock kind of side. Um, like, I don't know, like Backseat Lovers or like Peach Pit or like Declan McKenna, those fellas. Just like, a, I don't know, like soothing, like nighttime driving music. And then during the day, <laughs> during, <laughs> during the day, that? Uh, that was me going through. A little the voice crack. It was um, yeah, and then during the day, like, or whenever I'm just like trying to have more energy, I guess, I'll pull up like, I don't know, like, what are, what, are, what are some other like bands? I don't know, like Fall Out Boy, Paramore, uh, emo bands. Emo bands. Yeah. I'm like very different. I feel like Cal and I are like kind of similar in like our our tastes. They're and probably then, the closest. And then these two uh, are similar yeah. in like yeah. their tastes. Cause I like, I'm really into like post hardcore, like metal core, metal. Um, that's really like what I generally kind of like gravitate towards. And whenever like I'm playing guitar not band related, like it's almost exclusively like that style of music. That's what I listen to. That's what I like playing. But um, that's what I said, like in writing, like I try to incorporate like some aspects of that, which sometimes they're like, we need to bring that. We need to smooth <laughs> that out a little bit. Sometimes it's a little too much, but um, that's really like what I am like inspired by musically, but it also doesn't like not allow me to appreciate the style of music they're like they like and the style of music that we write yeah so that's just like my personal preference but that's what keeps me interested in like playing and learning new things so what about you guys yeah i mean i like you know like the the late 2000s like warped tour bands like you know we the kings all time low paramore fall out boy kind of thing um i like music that's like that's sad, but doesn't sound sad on the surface. <laughs> Let, like, so it can still make you happy yeah. if you're not paying attention to the lyrics. If it gets too like sad and self-indulgent sonically as well, I'm not like always that into it. But if it's, I like music that's, you know, like Melatonin, for example, it's kind yeah. of like not actually a happy song, but it sounds kind of happy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are like the kind of bands I'm inspired by. Uh, but then I can also get into like some heavier kind of stuff, like, uh, like Falling in Reverse or stuff like that. Um, Songified, great song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a good song. Or like, uh, or like issues and stuff. Those kind of bands. I, I or slaves. I listen to that kind of stuff sometimes. I love too. slaves. That's also yeah. another. That's a band we have. Yeah. I love slaves. Yeah. <laughs> slaves is really good. Yeah. We're discovering our common ground now. Yeah, <laughs> we're just realizing. Band. But they're like more, depending on the song, also like kind of like post hardcore ish. Like that would be like a heavier like aspect. Or like Pierce the Veil, it's another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah or like Sigma, Sigma, Sigma Sirens. That's Sigma yeah, that's Sigma also common. like I mean, a common song, yeah. common band that you we get. Kellen after all, yeah, great guy, man. yeah, great guy, great, great guy. And Cal, you listen to you like Senses Fail. <laughs> yeah, um, some of the bands that I like mainly like post hardcore bands, some metalcore bands like Senses Fail, probably my all time favorite. I like uh, Seosin, uh, Silverstein, a lot of S's I love here, Silverstein. a lot of S's. Um, 
Yeah, man, just pretty much anything like circa mid 2000s. You listen to Circa Survive? I do. I love Anthony <laughs> Green, man. He was the original vocalist of Seosun. You listen to oh, Chiodos or whatever? I love, called? dude, I have a Chiodos tattoo. Oh, so my sure. arm. Yeah. <laughs> I love Chiodos, man. <laughs> It honestly, like, kind of varies. I feel like, especially recently, that it, yeah. it's been a little it's like different. song by song, and also like EP. EP. Yeah, because like first EP, obviously that was like all Sean, um, and then once There's like some other cool fellows, but yeah, yeah, and 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 some other friends at the time. I don't know if you want to like chop them out. Oh yeah, like uh, great fellows. Like, well, obviously Jacob Craddock is always since he's so heavily involved yeah. as our producer. Mm -hmm. um, he's been a consistent part of like the Abbey Paint sound in yeah. a way, um, but then also like. Jack Ramucci uh, helping out with drums, uh, like Micah Rojas yep. uh, helping out with like bass and lead at a time at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Matthew Brown was like technically like in a way like in the band, but also kind of not. It was kind of weird. But yeah, he had his own like stuff going on too. Guy. He was just kind of doing stuff at, at, up his own as well as Ivy Paint. But then <clears throat> like around the time like I joined and whatnot. Yeah, so EP um, two. Yeah, is when. Basically, the writing process for me, anyway, was every once in a while I'd get a text. Sean would be like, "Oh, I created this like demo. It's him just like singing on like with an acoustic guitar or just vocals." Um, and then drums would probably get like laid down next, yeah. and then I would just kind of go into my own little hole and write what I could. Um, yeah. And then we would kind of pass that along, and then it would kind of keep like rotating around until we were all at a place where we mm. felt like we were happy with it. Yeah, so like during EP2, it's more like I showed you guys like the skeletons of the songs. And then uh, like respectively, uh, like you guys would add your stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of wrote them like they were acoustic songs. Mm -hmm. And then like you would come to me next and be like, here's the structure. How should we, what should the drums be? Yeah. Blah, blah. And then we go, I believe, to Christian. It was a lot of like, yeah, yeah it was a lot of like FaceTiming like during, because it was like during like COVID. Like lost, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, yep. And then, uh, yeah, so that's generally how it was for at least EP two, but then for this EP that we have, like we're rolling out this year, it's been more like a, it's been that's been a lot like, more like song by song, yeah, like different, like Mood Ring was written mm. in a completely different way from like bugging out. Yeah, it's been like, I mean, songwriting like with the four of us has been a lot more like collaborative, mm -hmm. um, and the songs like will build as a group rather than me like already having the skeleton finished. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've actually started like getting more into writing like melodies and like lyrics too, which is cool. Trying to, whenever, just like a quick little, whenever I joined the band, I'd never played with another musician ever. So I had no like former knowledge of like writing music, really like um, playing with any other musicians. So it's very much still like a learning process for me regarding mm -hmm. like what suits each song best and um, just like being confident with mm -hmm. what I can come up with, so. And he's 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 developed that confidence, and now he's writing beautiful melodies I'm, on I'm the new songs best. we're crafting. And, and then he, recently, Cal, dude, Cal's a songwriting force, bro. He'll literally he'll knock out like a whole three minute like fully developed like instrumental in, in like a day, like not even a week, <laughs> like, like a week ago or like two weeks ago. Now we were I was just like sitting on my phone one day, and he, this guy probably sends like five different <laughs> demos through in like the in a, same day yeah. within like a couple hours notice we're like where are you getting all these he's yeah. like oh, just, i don't know just pulling them out like almost like a like a song a day like yeah he was crazy. just like cranking them out to the point where i'm like i don't even know where to what to work on or start <laughs> yeah. next there's so many of them there's so many decisions yeah. cal works fast oh, i respect that yeah. that's great um but yeah i mean we'll after like Cal or I or Christian would like bring in like an instrumental. Um, we'll be like, yeah, like maybe this is the one that we want to like put more time into. And then we kind of just focus on that one for a second. Yeah, it's definitely like song by song. Yeah. We'll yeah. lay a bunch out and then pick which one that we think we should move forward yeah, with we're, first. We're in like a good spot now where like we actually have options. Yeah. Like we, can, we have songs to choose from now, which mm -hmm. in the past it was like write this one, finish it, then move yeah. on. Yeah. Now we can actually like kind of pick and choose which ones are good and which ones aren't. Mm. I think it's better to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. And also just the way with like how streaming and like music listening works nowadays, it makes more sense to like, I don't I mean, this is kind of related to 
our plan for this year, but uh, you know, like the single every other month. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rather than like dropping in like a whole album and like I don't know, like only and three top songs. Listen to the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> EP three, I believe the first song was for it was "Bugging Out" that was written, right? Yeah, John? Mm-hmm. I believe so. And I it's believe important. I remember working out the drums for it, or at least what they're going to be, at my old roommate's Dang, apartment, bro. AJ's apartment. So that means we've been sitting on this one since like fifty fifty, like was yeah, kind of like out since or like the end of twenty twenty. We've been at least sitting on the idea for "Bugging Out." Yeah. Um, so it's been like kind of a slow moving. It started to speed up again during the summer, mm-hmm. um, but we've been taking a lot of different approaches this time around. I know mm-hmm. we have this song called Mood Ring that's coming out this summer. Yeah, I believe that we demoed out completely in our friend Marco's or Sonic Halls is what he goes by for his music. But uh, we demoed the whole thing out in his home studio in like a day. We had some things like bugging out that we've just finished and also have been working on since 2020. Um, Quincy, I guess, is another one that's coming out, and that one. Um, what was the process like for that one for vocals? So, I know that was the last one you did. Yeah, I mean, vocals. overall, like, this is kind of answering your question, like, the response to that. But, like, I don't know, like, this EP has been, like, almost, uh, like, splitting the old sound that, like, everyone's already used to, like, hearing from us. But then also adding like those newer elements that we've noticed, like um, just in like newer rock and pop punk nowadays, with like trap drums and more like synths. Yeah, because we've never we've never really like fully gone into um, breaking outside of like you know bass, guitar, and drums. Yeah, it was pretty um, like bare bones, just lay down vocals, mm-hmm. rhythm, bass, drums, and yeah, mix it, and that was pretty much it. Now it's more like synth oriented stuff. Um, just like kind of messing around like creatively with what could like mm. what fits the song but also is like a newer sound from what yeah. we've done yeah. before it's yeah we're like, like trying new things you know yeah. yeah like figuring out how we can evolve the band without completely sounding like a different band at the same time mm-hmm. i think that's been that's probably been the biggest conversation overall for the entire recording process is how do we not do the last two albums mm-hmm. again but how do we also still sound like us while doing something different so that's pretty much what this whole process has been that's been the main thing pretty much yeah yeah it's like a logical like next step because it's not like you would listen and be like this is not the same band anymore yeah it still sounds very much us for sure it's just a little more um just some like different elements some like newer like uh wave stuff a good example is like kind of like paramore changing in a way like they'll still like they're still doing like full band sounding stuff that like creates like a good live show and like mm-hmm. still has energy but also like it's very different from like misery business versus like i don't know hard times or yeah. like ain't it fun or something. i don't know i think it fills out the song a little bit more though yeah yeah i mean it keeps it fresh for not only the listeners but us too yeah like if we were just doing the same thing uh like over and over it'd be like it probably wouldn't be as like fulfilling to just sound like we're like repeating yeah and i think like live is where it really like comes through mm-hmm. as well because i know like whenever we were Whenever like I joined and we were first playing, we were just playing songs from like the first EP or mm-hmm. even the second, and there wasn't really any like energy. There, well, there just wasn't anything like kind of in the back. Like you wouldn't have like backing tracks oh, or yeah. anything like that. So there, you could tell that there was a lot of like empty space. Mm. And now with like what we've been incorporated now, like whenever we played like bugging out for the first few times, yeah. everything just feels more full. Yeah, yeah, a lot more full. Um, almost more. It almost feels like more professional in a way because like it just mm-hmm. rounds out the sound a little bit. I think. Yeah. We started using the backing tracks and stuff a couple months ago, and that's been a blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not like a relying on thing, but it's definitely like a adding like a cherry or a sprinkle on top of our set. Yeah, yeah. filling out the, the space. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, in regards to like EP3, it's it's got the new stuff, um, but also it kind of also includes that emo stuff, like or like the darker tones from uh, Quiet Compassion, the first EP. Um, like on Quincy. Yeah. Um, so it's not entirely like glossy, happy, cheery, like upbeat stuff, but it's also not entirely like super depressing, moody shit at the yeah. same time. Yeah, I think there's something for everyone on this EP. <laughs> A little something for all you guys. <laughs>
Yeah. And I think that comes. Cal, what do you think of the new song? Well, <laughs> Sorry, you've been quiet. I, uh, I just kind of joined my like, car uh, <laughs> as it was like getting completed, but um, I'm kind of help writing some of the like finishing touches, I guess, yeah. with, like some of the keyboard stuff. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I mean, it's coming along pretty well and uh, we're excited for you to hear it pretty soon. Yep. You're all stuck. <laughs> you go first. All right, my favorite, I have two favorites for different reasons. Uh, Bugging Out, just because I like the like happy peppy stuff that's sad but doesn't sound so, kind of like what I was saying earlier, it's still a fun song. Um, and then there's a song uh, coming out called Mood Ring that I really like. I think it's the probably the most like out of left field thing we've done. Yeah. Um, and I'm I like it because I'm the most curious to see how people are going to respond to that one. Uh, just because it's probably the most different thing we've ever done. We won't say the uh, the feature, but the person the uh, the other group that's a part of that song. We have a vocal feature on the song. We have a vocal, mm -hmm. It's kind of a band feature, but a vocal feature. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think it's a great uh, combination of both of our two sounds yeah. in a way, too. Um, we'll, we'll announce who it is eventually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Christian, what's your favorite? Um, I don't know. I think my favorite is probably like Bedheads. Really? So far, I, knew I you think. Were say that. Just yeah. because. Um, Jacob said that as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's a very like. I think like more like groove oriented song. Um, it's fun, fun to play. You know, it's not a song where it's not like super technical, at least not like the lead writing for it isn't super te technical. So it's going to be fun to play. I'm excited to play it yeah. like live. But it's also um, like not so easy that it's boring. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like, not boring. boring, but it's just not as like technical, it's just more like upbeat kind of fun. Um, I think it sounds really good. Yeah, I'm eager to play it live. So I think that would probably be my favorite so far. I compare that one to like, it's if we're like looking at our head other rush. songs, I'd compare that one to like Head Rush yeah. a little bit in terms of at least like it's kind of it's like Head Rush style. but better. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. Refined Head Rush. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think you were talking about Quincy earlier. I think Quincy is probably my favorite because um, I get to like bring out those screams that I used to do on the first EP, like on uh, screams, more like just yelling Yells. with grit. <laughs> Yells. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also the song that's technically the oldest on this EP because I wrote that even before like at the same time that I was writing like Head Rush and like uh, I don't know like the songs on EP too. Yeah. What about um, you Kel? Oh definitely Quincy. Quincy? Yeah like wow. yeah. I didn't know that. I like the time change and uh, that little that little tempo change. Yeah. Uh, Quincy's definitely the heaviest song yeah. on the next EP. Mm -hmm. Heaviest? Pretty dark. Darkest. Yeah. Yeah. Completely different from like bugging out mood ring bedheads mm -hmm. yeah. for the first three will roll out. Yeah. Like I think um <clears throat> just like before, it's not like even within our EPs, like there are no two songs that like sound the same. Yeah. Um, Especially on this one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like uh I don't know, even that diversity not only within like from EP to EP, but like song to song within the EP makes for like what I consider like a more uh engaging and like Interesting. And interesting, like listening experience and also playing experience with us. Hmm. Personally, I thought this music video was the most fun to shoot, mm. especially like the aspect of it kind of all being shot in like one, like one, like continuous oh, yeah. shot, I think was cool. Um, but also, I guess just one aspect, whenever the backpack was thrown on me, <laughs> my that, backpack, that was, that was his <laughs> like, Full backpack. My school backpack. Yeah, like, like full, my laptop like and like laptop, my floors and binders books, and like, textures. like everything. And Wait, there we, was stuff in that? Yeah, it was a full I didn't backpack. Realize that. So, <laughs> we, so it looked real, man. We were, we were going for It that was Oscar. real. I was probably hit with that in my stomach probably like, it was method like acting. five or six different times, <laughs> I guess, until we got like the right take and it hurt each and every time. Yeah. But uh, it was it was worth it. If Vine was still around, I would do it for the Vine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do mean, it for the talk, the, yeah. um, the TikTok. The idea of the video came more from me, like, re you know the show Daredevil, right? Yeah. I made you watch it. Yeah, I love that show. Yeah, it's a great show. It's a, it's a really great show. But you're just like, dude, he's like Batman. You won't kill them, man. What? What? <laughs> what does that have to do? Every season has like one episode that has like a really awesome like 15 or 20 minute like one shot take. Yeah, um, okay. And so what else has done it? Like uh, 
I was talking about 1917 yeah, the other day. Yeah. That's like made to look like all one shot. There's Birdman. Um, but anyways, I was just like really captivated by the idea of like a nice, you know, doing that in a music video form. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a perfect place to film it at that would that allowed for one shots to be, yeah. to be filmed. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's like our most aesthetically pleasing to the eyes like video. Yeah, I think so. Um, that, thanks to Johnny and Christian behind the camera. Great guys. Great guys. <laughs> Great guys. But uh, excellent. yeah, guys. I mean, I, I really, it's probably also my favorite video that Ivy Paint has ever done. Um, Cause we got to not only do like the normal like band playthrough shots, but also like, you know, literally act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, more act, probably the same amount of acting that we did in like the melatonin video. Yeah. But the, the it, it, but it was kind of more of like serious acting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not as, it wasn't comedic acting this time. Yeah, we got to show off our, our acting chops. We're like, we're all Jared Leto now. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a band and we're actors. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, it's Cal's first video. Yeah. yeah, first. I wasn't even an official member. I'm just, uh, <laughs> no, not the time. That's, <laughs> that's why. That's why. That's, that's why. If you're wondering if he doesn't, have, why he doesn't have any like of his own like acting shots, acting yeah. shots, is yeah. because he wasn't like officially in yet. Mm. Now he is. So future videos, he will have his own <laughs> shots. Just not. I mean, just not at that time. Yeah. Same with Marco. True. Or Sonic calls because he was in the video too. But same thing it was kind of like filling in a little bit. Yeah. So he didn't have his own shots either. But. Um, it was cool to have him on that song too. Dude, it was also fun because in order to like plan out the shots, I had to show up with just me and Johnny and Christian to your house and you weren't there. Yes. Yeah. This house. Um, and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> now we found out. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it was just like us walking through the house in the dark when like your family is home, like with the flashlights and you're like dogs, like, like following us around. Yeah, that should have been, <laughs> that should have been but, filmed. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm super pleased with how it came out. Um, all the tracking shots are awesome, and the uh, the playthrough shots look are gorgeous. Sick. Yeah, they look great. It's like I don't know. It feels like a like a full like. It almost feels like a music video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is like, how good the playthrough yeah. shots are. Yeah. Is that I thought like the playthrough shots are are my favorite part of a video that is primarily acting shots. Just because I love how good those playthroughs, they look so crisp. Yeah. They just look so good. I'm, I'm glad we could do both the yeah. acting. I, mean, yeah. I hope we can continue doing that in our videos. Yeah. We probably will. We will. <laughs> we have to. These are so fun. Cal, what was your favorite part of the video? Um, I mean, I, I was just pretty much there for the um, actual, like the, the performance Play shots. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, mean, I thought doing that was pretty cool. Did you like when I fell on my ass after like the first take? Oh, that. Did you slip yeah. on oil? Or something? No, he just tripped over no the I just cables. tripped because I was getting oh. real into it. No, right? yeah. he was getting real was, into it at the end. I want to get some good shots. Yeah. yeah, before we filmed, I was like looking at our old, old music videos, uh, videos, and I was like, I can, I can give more energy to the playthrough shots, and I gave it my 110. percent Um, it's changed and helped the band because it takes some, of, some, not all, but some of the workload off of us, so we can focus more on writing and recording music and making music videos and doing the actual stuff that we like to do. <laughs> and we can uh, delegate tasks to that guy, Nathan yeah. Darmody from a band called All Star Weekend, one of my favorite bands when I was a, a youngin. So that's pretty cool to have him on the team. Um, yeah, it's nice having someone on board who like was going through the artist experience. Um, so like he understands what our point of view it's like in yeah. regards to you know doing the band thing, I guess, um, and that that's also on top of the fact that he like does help us like focus on like what we should be doing with our like time and energy with the band. Yeah, um, and also like I hate writing emails. If I'm gonna be honest, I like I would always prefer like texting or like I don't know going through like Instagram DMs. But like uh, Darmody uh, is always like staying on top of being really professional yeah. for us because I could not write a professional email for my life. I don't know, the thing I like is there's just a lot more like organization. Mm. Like um, He's very organized. And it also makes the band feel like more official. 
Yeah, it helps, guys, it helps exactly. the helps the morale. Yeah, like it makes it like because before um without a manager, like there wasn't any like any type of like pressure or any like real urgency, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to like get things like pushed out or to have like an official like social media schedule or like anything mm -hmm. like that. So it makes it definitely feel like a lot more official to me anyway, like having to like be on top of certain things, um, and have just like that like level of like management organization. Yeah, I mean, it feels like we've like entered like the next stage. Of our, yeah, for of sure, our band's it does. Career. It does feel like that, it's, definitely. It's good to have someone holding you accountable that's not a member of your band because when you have band members trying to hold each other accountable, that can cause tension. Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's uh, coming from someone that's been in like seven bands, but um, it's so it's good to have that like third party kind of holding us all accountable for the things that we need to be getting done so that we're not internally like annoying each other trying to get the things yeah. done. So yeah. I think that's a plus definitely. It's been cool too because like we'll also uh I mean I will at least like just like FaceTime him like on like randomly and like just literally just like talk to him just like vibe and like get to know like his days at like uh when he was in All-Star Weekend and stuff like that. Um and also like we have like Little songwriting sessions on FaceTime, which is cool. He's a really, he's a really great songwriter. Shout out to uh, F C D T. I think so. Yeah. I think it does. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, yeah this is artist name. He's got good music. Mm -hmm. But Cal. Um. Yeah. I mean, pretty much what everybody else has said. It feels more professional. Um. Feels like there's more structure. More things are gonna get done, like in a more timely manner. I guess. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I mean it. That's on little. Oh man. I mean, uh, without I think social media, we'd be nowhere. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, honestly. We got, admittedly, we got super lucky. Um, it was specifically the Dear Maria phase that kind of, or uh, that one trend that was like, it's not a phase, mom, or something like that. It was a lifestyle. Um, and we did one of those videos, and like, it was a. Uh, I don't know, the videos before were only getting like 100, 200 like views or something like that. But then it felt like once we got one viral video, like people actually digged what we were yeah. doing. Yeah. And then uh, things, it just continued. And then yeah. I think we did it differently too, in the sense that we actually played the song in the yeah, video. It was like full band, not just like one we, person. We, yeah, took the concept mm -hmm. and did it in a different way. Yeah, that's. I think that had it's somewhat all, to do with it. It's also just like a nice avenue of like, you know, like, more content in a way that's a that's a word that i think a lot of bands have like a love-hate relationship with because i think during covid a lot of musicians and bands didn't really know how to do the social media thing and so once covid hit they were kind of like forced to Learn. figure out yeah. how how to maneuver the the internet scape um because that's all being in a band was in 2020 was yeah. being like having an internet presence really yeah mm -hmm. like a lot of bands only thought about like making good music and giving good live shows but um thankfully like i don't know we were uh i don't know where we were at like we realized that like in order to stay connected to our fans in a way like we yeah, did have to like without playing shows exactly um we did have to like make like you know stuff to just like stay in touch with them and like let them know what's going on and then keep keep, uh, keep the brand alive <laughs> keep the band and the brand alive same thing. uh so for the rest of the year uh i guess starting up a couple months we're going to be playing south by southwest music festival in austin texas um that'll be our first kind of real gig playing outside of the state of Florida. So I think that for our first- We're national, group, baby. Yeah, let's go. Cool. <laughs> so I think as far as our first show outside of the state, playing at South by Southwest, uh, that's, gonna, that's a pretty good first out of state gig. Really excited for that. Um, we have a two week uh, summer tour that we are in the final stages of putting together right now. So I'm not gonna give out, I know the dates, we know the dates, but I'm still the lineup is it. The lineup is yeah, pretty sexy, like, man venues and whatnot like are still like kind of to be determined so yeah. more details will be released as i kind of go oh good plug you can go to our website now <laughs> we got a website we dude. have a website if you go to ivypaintband.com it's like you can put handle. your it's a good handle it's, it's fitting <laughs> you can um 
We're still oh. rolling. Oh, well, that was my bad. Uh, yeah, if you go to ivypaintband.com, you can put your email in and subscribe for like notifications. So whenever like we do have like the official like venues and dates and locations for the tour, it'll be posted there. It'll also be posted like on our Instagram and whatnot. But if you want like an instant um, like notification for that, definitely go yeah. to the site and subscribe there. New merch is also up there right now too. So you can check that out. Yeah, we got, um, and as far as the rest of the year, as far as music release is uh, concerned, we have songs coming out pretty much every other month for the entire year. Uh, some features on songs, uh, music video for every song, pretty much, hopefully that's usually how we do it. Um, so you can expect a lot of music this year consistently, whereas in 2021, we kind of finished off our 2020 EP and then put out one single after this year, we're going to be consistently putting out music all year. So uh, the band's not really going to like go dark at all this year. So no. yeah. you can expect a lot. That's why, I mean, that's kind of in a way like why we were uh, kind of a little bit off the grid for uh, at least like the latter half of 2021. Cause we were figuring out like, all right, what's, what's the plan like for, yeah, for next year? Yeah. Um, and we were also doing like all the, the writing and recording, so. Yeah. I feel like after Summer Soundwave Fest, we kind of like got quieter. And started yeah, really for sure. Working. Um, but outside of the music and the tour in South by Southwest, if you are from Orlando, uh, I don't know when this is coming out, but we have a I, we have a show opening for I Set My Friends on Fire. That is February 2nd. February 2nd, awesome. And then we also have the the Fall Out Boy cover set, or it's like the Warped Winter, and there's gonna be like a bunch of bands covering like Warped Tour bands. Um, and we're playing that on March 4th, I think. Oh, gosh, I'm pretty certain. Looking. Check okay. our socials or our website. Or our website, it'll be there um, too. Yeah, and that'll be that'll be fun because uh, Fall Out Boy was one of the, I think that's a that's a pretty fair, like we all know about Sugar We're Going Down and like Dance Dance and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That used to be in our set. Yep, Dance Dance. used to cover that, yeah. Um, but yeah, then there's a, uh, the warp winner and then uh i know we'll keep busy with there'll it. be plenty more too. yeah plenty more <laughs> just keep an eye on like our socials and the website for updated um like shows and tour news and whatnot mm -hmm. so it'll all be there keep them busy all right we've been ivy Pink. thanks for having us on the cookhouse uh keep a lookout for new songs coming out the entire year uh summer tour yep and Top also Southwest. our song bugging out just came out uh, awesome music video. It's on all platforms. Great song. Be sure to check out um, our website for updated um, like tour dates, tickets, merch, everything. IvyPinkBand.com. Yeah, it's pretty new cool merch looking up right merch. now. It's so like better than like Thrasher shirts, man. They're yeah, comfy. It's, it's quality. It's yeah. quality. We should have brought one. Yeah, we should. Let's oh, do it. I'm wearing this. <laughs> there we go. That's a that's a tour exclusive. That's tour exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> Can't get it anymore. <laughs> no, that's just a Soundwave exclusive. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank Adios, you. everybody. Hey.